Hello, I'm Lynette Martin, Mayor of the City of Mount Gambier, and with me this morning is our CEO, Andrew Middle, and we're here to talk to you about some of the outcomes from uh, last Tuesday night's council meeting. Um, we had a, a full gallery uh, because members of the Mount Gambier Bowling Club were there anxiously awaiting outcomes um, from a council um, resolution that was put to the meeting. Um, the, the Bowls Club, which is situated at Van Sitter Park, have um, put up several uh, concepts of uh, draw, uh, drawings for a cover to be put over one of the greens of their club so that they can play um, bowls all year round in comfort. So previous concepts uh, um, have been presented to the operational um, committee and the standing uh, operational standing committee, sorry, and um, council assessment panel. Um, they were rejected um, because of the look and feel of them, but also the heritage advisor was not happy given um, the area uh, that it was in. Uh, however, the other night, um, Council agreed to provide landlord consent based on a revised plan. And now the plan will proceed to um, development approval. So that was a good outcome for the Mount Gambier Bowls Club and uh, I think the members left the meeting very happy. Mm. Yeah, as should um, the members from South Gambia Football Club. Um, they had approached Council and asked us to provide a financial guarantee to enable them to undertake um, some grant funded building works and um, Council considered a policy to enable that to happen and then uh, ratified the policy and agreed to be the financial guarantor for them. So they can now move forward in, in comfort and deliver um, a great project that they're proposing at uh, their facility. Um, one of the other important pieces of business was to look at the committee structure of council. Current um, uh, Until the meeting we had an operational standing committee and a strategic standing committee and we um, decided to move away from that uh, and move to a people and place committee and an economic and environment committee which are more closely aligned to the themes within the community plan. We've uh, also increased the membership so that all councillors and the mayor sit on each committee because the previous committee structure was quite divisive. Uh, and we've also increased the membership for, of the Regional Sport and Recreation Centre Committee to all nine elected members too, uh, for the same reason, because that's a key strategic project for the city uh, and it needs the involvement of the complete elected body to enable that to happen. Um, the People and Place Committee and the Economic and Environment um, Committee will meet um, every other month uh, alternately, uh, kicking off with an e Economic and Environment Committee on the 2nd of September. Very good. And we also received another deputation from the Limestone Coast Protection Alliance um, Group and they were requesting council to co-sign a letter to Fossil Free South Australia requesting a ban on all new uh, fossil fuel exploration in the Cooper and Otway basins and also in, in the Bight. Um, there was much debate and discussion on this with four councillors um, uh, for it and for against council taking that action. So we do acknowledge the need to transition to a carbon constrained world and um, in the light of um, the, f the fact that we felt we needed more information uh, we decided um, against signing uh, the letter at this point in time. So another um, key project um, that the council decided to put some funding toward uh, is one uh, which is a bit of a mouthful, underwater paleontology. Um, so this is a, an exciting project um, that uh, brings together in partnership the council um, together with uh, higher education facilities, Cave Diving uh, Australia, uh, Department of Environment and Water. Um, the, everyone will be aware of the, the great um, opportunities we have in the region in terms of narrow cork caves and dry caves with the, the fossils that can be um, found in them. Well the next stage is to examine our sinkholes which are full of water but also um, have uh, significant fossil remains in them. So this project is about um, developing uh, a process by which uh, diving can take place to recover those um, fossils, catalogue them 
uh, and do it in a way that um, preserves them um, in, in the future uh, and uh, then uh, is able to work out what geological events have happened to cause extinctions of different um, species during uh, the geological time frame. Council's got involved in this because of the tourism opportunities. So we're linking this to our um, project um, to change our approach from sinkholes to cenotes, which is the international word for the same geological phenomenon, uh, and to really capitalise on the tourism benefits of being able not only to visit the World Heritage Site at uh, Naracor Caves, but also to examine what we have in our part of the region uh, when you look at the significant mm. geological finds uh, and again look to uh, link to our volcanic history and geological phenomena that we have in that field is a great opportunity for people to stay longer in our region and explore mm. more. Absolutely, that's a really exciting one isn't mm. it? Well that concludes our wrap up of the August uh, council meeting for today and I hope you have enjoyed listening to um, the snippets of information. And uh, just to remind you all that Council does meet on the third Tuesday of a month and that the public are most welcome to join us in the gallery. And if you are unable to do that, uh, pop onto the Council website where you'll find our agendas and minutes and all the activities of Council so that you can keep fully informed um, of our activities.